Hey everyone. Um, there was a time in my life where I um, really felt uh, strongly about uh, reaching out to uh, Jewish people um, and that sort of thing. And um, there was there's been a number of times that I have, well, not a whole lot, but there have have been some, a few times that I've interacted with um, Jewish people. Me being a Christian. Um, I remember I went to a very Jewish neighborhood. I think it's Jewel Avenue in, um, when I lived in Jackson Heights, uh, Queens. And um, I spoke to a young Jewish guy and I asked him about, um, because as a Christian, I believe uh, in a Trinity. And um, I asked him about, you know, like where God says, let us make man in our image. And um, this particular person uh his response to that was that God was making, he was speaking to angels. But um, problem with that is uh, angels don't create. Um, there was another Jewish guy um, and he was cool. I mean, I got along with him and stuff like that um, when I worked at uh, a thrift store. And I tried to, you know, I present the gospel to him. And he, um, br he brought up an objection and said that it's a very old objection about how um, there are Jewish people who believe that um, Jesus's uh, body was stolen and I couldn't help but think about uh, Matthew uh, 28 11 to 15 when he said that to me because in the New Testament itself it says now while they were while they were on their way some of the men now this is after Jesus was crucified. And so now while they were on their way, some of the men from the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, you are to say his disciples came at night and stole him while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, he, uh, 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 we will appease him and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. So this was the New Testament itself exposes this as a lie that was um, going around in, uh, Jewish circles. And obviously there are people who would believe that today, unfortunately. Um, there was one person around here who actually, um, I'm not sure if he was Jewish, but I mean, you know, from a Jewish family, I don't believe, I think he was atheist, but he told me that he actually made the assertion and said that Paul, the Apostle Paul, um, hated Jews with a passion. And oh my goodness, I just, I wish I would have had the verse um, in front of me at the time. And... In Romans 9, where Paul says, I speak the truth in Christ. I am not ly lying. My conscience, my conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. 
and he goes and theirs is the adoption to sonship. There's the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship and the promises. I mean, so he goes on, Paul. And it, I mean, what a smack in the face, what uh, spitting on the Apostle Paul to actually make an assertion like that, to say that he actually um, ha hated the Jewish people. Um, that's why um, Paul can, that's why he actually um, tells the truth because he has love for them. And we also see in um, where he said in Romans uh, 10, my heart's desire, my prayer to God for them is for their salvation. For I testify about them that they have a zeal for God, but not in accordance with knowledge. For not knowing about God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. Um, the New Testament applies uh, numerous prophecies all throughout the um, what Christians call Old Testament, um, applies numerous prophecies to Jesus, including Isaiah 53, where um, it says, who has believed what we have heard from us and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form of majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, some translations by his stripes, we are healed. This is prophecy about the crucifixion, the murdering, killing of Jesus. With his, with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that, that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth by oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had, he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord. It pleased God to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offering he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in this land. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors transgressors yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors transgressors 
please go to, they have, there's charts that will show you how um, Jesus fulfilled prophecy from the Jewish scriptures. He was wounded for our, our transgressions. Some Jewish people interpret that as some Jewish people um, interpret that as being all of Israel. But it's saying he was wounded for our transgressions. It's differentiating. If we are honest with the text, we have to look at it and we have to rightfully interpret it. Um, so we look at history. The temple was destroyed. There's no animal sacrifice to go back to. Um, Book of Hebrews makes that very, very abundantly clear. John applies Zechariah 12.10 to um, Jesus. Look, look at Zechariah 12.10. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that what they, when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. Now, not that I'm picking on Jewish people. This is the human condition, okay? We look at the, the scriptures, um, the, Pente the Pentateuch, we look at what we call the Old Testament, and what do we see all throughout the entire thing? We see Israel, um, uh, they're doing good, and then they go apostate, they fall away from God, God punishes them, they come back to God, they repent. This happens over and over and over again, all throughout the scriptures. This is clear, clearly speaking about Jesus. It's not hard to believe when that, when you see how many times the Jewish people um, rejected God's word over and over again in the scriptures. It's not difficult to believe that they rejected their Messiah. We have in, we have to keep in mind in um, 2 Corinthians um, 3, 12 to 14, Paul says, therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. But their minds were made dull. For to this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. I know this is extremely offensive to Jewish people, extremely offensive, but the only correct way, according to the New Testament revelation, the only correct way to view the Jewish scriptures is through the lens of the New Testament, how the New Testament interprets the Jewish scriptures. We have, let's see in Romans eleven twenty five. 
where Paul said, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in, and in this way all Israel will be saved. It's not saying that, and, and this is where dispensationalists get it wrong. Dispensationalists, um, which is a modern theology, a perversion of the scriptures, um, and there's different branches. Probably one of the worst, I think, is the kind that John Hagee is a part of, um, believing that Jewish people have this second program of salvation, which is completely inaccurate, completely inaccurate. The New Testament revelation is so clear. John, let's look at John 3, 18 to 20, where it says, Whoever believes in him, speaking of Jesus, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment the light has come into the world and people love darkness, love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. The human condition is spoken about in Romans 1 where it teaches the only reason people reject God, reject the gospel, is because they love their sin and so they want to suppress the truth. They have a bias. They don't want to believe. That can manifest in numerous ways. It can manifest in false religion. It can manifest in atheism. It manifests with different people in different ways. People have different tastes, um, how they want to suppress the truth. Um so we need, as Christians, we need to present the gospel and sometimes give hard truths to people, even though it will <clears throat> offend them. Because uh, Jesus spoke about hell. Jesus said that hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm never dies, where the fire is never quenched. Jesus said it's eternal punishment. And outer darkness, Re Book of Revelation says the smoke of their torment goes up forever. They have no rest day and night. And so, according to the New Testament, um, Jesus was the final sacrifice for sins. And now under this new covenant, salvation is through him. He was the fulfillment of Jewish prophecy of the Messiah. The New Testament is clear. It teaches that. Um, and this is not just for Jews. In this time that we live in, salvation is offered to every type of person. Okay. It says that he purchased people from every tribe, tongue, and nation, Revelation 5, 9. And who re whoever rejects the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah will go to hell. That's what Jesus taught. It's salvation by faith alone. It's not by works. It's not by doing things. It's a change in the heart. It's not by works, but the truly saved person will have a changed heart and will desire to live holy. Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I command you. John 15, 14. You could look that up. There is lordship involved. We're not saved by doing works, the works of the law, um, trying to be a good person, um, trying to do good things. We're not saved by doing those things. Christianity, Jesus and Paul taught that we are saved through faith alone. And 
it's not by works. If we think it's by works, we're in error. Um, in the book of Galatians, some of the Jewish Christians, people who converted from Judaism to Christianity, um, they, the ones that were, um, have con converted to Christianity, they wanted to, some of them, some of them said that, okay, we're going to believe on Jesus, but we also have to be circumcised. So they were trying to be justified by the works of the law, by doing works. And Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was very clear and told them, if they try to do that, you are severing yourself from Christ. That is what the Holy Spirit spoke through the Apostle Paul. That's in sacred scripture. There, um, Dr. Michael Brown, um, who came from a Jewish background and converted to Christianity, uh, has, I think it's a three volume set. It's called Answering Jewish Objections. I would highly recommend that because it would clear up a lot of misunderstandings on this whole debate in depth. He, I, I mean, he has teachings on YouTube. He has debates and stuff like that. So I would highly recommend his um, works in this area. But we need to um, make it clear to our Jewish friends that we care and we love you and we want, we want to give you this message of salvation because we know that the Messiah did come and it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this era in history, um, he's the Messiah and if we reject him, we are cutting ourselves off from God. And that's what Jesus taught clearly. That's what the apostles taught clearly. Um, if we are rejecting Jesus as the Messiah, we are cutting ourselves off of a relationship with God. And Jesus was clear that the majority of humanity, not just Jewish people, but the majority of humanity are not going to be saved. So I would highly recommend um, those works. And this, this is a plea to people. Um, if you have Jewish friends, maybe have them check this out. But um, uh, Jesus was the fulfillment of the Jewish scripture. Jewish prophecies in scripture about the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. He fulfilled prophecies that were um, written hundreds of years before he was born to Mary, but he existed before that. He said, before Abraham was, I am. And it's amazing because um, the Talmud, an ancient um famous Jewish writings that absolutely did not believe that um, Jesus was the Messiah. But there are some scholars, there are some historians who believe that the Jesus of the New Testament is spoken about in the Talmud. And yes, they get some details about Jesus wrong. But it's interesting that in a strictly Jewish anti-Jesus, anti-Jesus being the Messiah, writing, ancient writing, the Talmud, um, that the Talmud actually says that Jesus was, um, he was executed for practicing sorcery. Really interesting because he did a lot of miracles back then. So here you have a strictly Jewish writing that did not accept Jesus as the Messiah, um, acknowledging, uh, confirming that there was something supernatural about him. 
that's the the Talmud is not part of the Bible. The Talmud is something that it, it's an ancient Jewish writing that strictly does not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But it confirmed that he performed miracles because it said that he was executed for practicing um, in their unbelieving mind how they worded it. They said that he was executed for practicing sorcery. So I would highly recommend um, doing more homework on this. There's all kinds of things and books where you can, um, where it'll show you um, from the Jewish scriptures how Jesus fulfilled prophecies in the New Testament, prophecies that were written hundreds of years before he was born to Mary. That is amazing. So I didn't want to go too long with this, but I kind of did go somewhat long. And I hope this was um, helpful.